Hello Brighouse High School and welcome to this lesson which is going to be focusing on the respiratory system. During today's lesson we're going to look at three areas. We're firstly going to discuss the functions and what the main role of the respiratory system is. We're then going to explore the different components or parts that make up the respiratory system. And then we're going to analyse a process which is called diffusion that happens during gaseous exchange. So, respiration is simply the action of breathing. So that involves us bringing oxygen into the body and breathing out or removing carbon dioxide. Therefore, the two primary roles are inhalation or breathing in of oxygen and other essential nutrients and exhalation, breathing out or expelling carbon dioxide and other waste products. If we were to look at that process or those roles in relation to performance, as we said, inhalation is all about bringing oxygen into the body. And as we know from the muscular system, oxygen is the fuel that allows our muscles to work. At the same time, we remove the waste products, such as carbon dioxide, and by doing so, the athlete is to able to perform all movements and maintain a high level of performance for longer. So, what we're going to look at now is the different components of the respiratory system. And we're going to look at nine different components, starting at number one. So, number one is the nasal passage. And this is basically how we get all of that air into the body when we breathe in or inhalation. This air then travels over the larynx, and the larynx is basically what we use to create sounds. You will probably know to it or refer to it as the voice box. After the air has passed the larynx, it will then travel down what we know is called the trachea, or the windpipe. And air passes down the trachea, which then leads into the lungs. Once we get into the lungs, we have two things called bronchi which split carrying air into the left lung and into the right lung. Once air has travelled down the bronchi, this bronchi then split again into smaller tubes called bronchioles which then distribute the air into what we call alveoli. These alveoli are millions and millions and millions of tiny air sacs and it's in here that gases pass through from the lungs into the bloodstream. And that's something that we're going to look at later on. The ribs, as we've discussed previously, form a very, very important function for the respiratory system because it protects the lungs and it stops them from getting damaged during any type of contact. In between the lungs, we have muscles called intercostal muscles. And these are the muscles which allow your ribs to expand when you breathe in and out. And lastly, the essential muscle for breathing is called the diaphragm. And this is the sheet of muscle that lies underneath the lungs. And this muscle contracts and moves to expand the chest cavity so that you can breathe air in and likewise breathe air out. If you want to take the time to go back through these, then pause the video, rewind it back, because you will need to know the role of each nine components. So, we're going to start looking at the air that we actually breathe in and compare what it looks like before we breathe it in to after we breathe it out. So, the air that we breathe in is made up of many different gases, which are then transported to the lungs. Once the lungs have processed this air, we then exhale it, and although it contains the same gases, they're made up of different percentages. So, this graph here shows the percentages of inhaled air. The vast majority of which is made up of nitrogen. 78% is made up of nitrogen. 21% of inhaled air is oxygen. And 0.03% is made up of carbon dioxide. If we then compare that to the air that we exhale you'll notice that some of those figures are the same. Nitrogen remains the same at 78%. However, oxygen has reduced by 16. So we've used some of the oxygen that we've breathed in. And one of the most significant differences that you can see there is that the carbon dioxide percentage has increased quite significantly, going up to 4%. 
The three main gases that you need to know why the percentages of either increased, decreased, or say the same are as shown here. Oxygen clearly decreases because we require that gas. So the body absorbs the oxygen so that it can use it to fuel the muscles and the organs. So that's why it goes down when we exhale hurt. Carbon dioxide increases because the body doesn't require this gas. It's a waste product that's, that is produced and therefore we need to get rid of it. And nitrogen stays the same because the body does not require this gas, nor does it produce the gas. It just forms a large body of the gas that we breathe in. You will need to know the exact percentages for inhaled and exhaled hair. So make sure you take the time to learn those. So gaseous exchange. So the gaseous exchange is a process of gas physically transferring between cells. The image on your screen now is a cross section of those millions of alveoli that are located in the lungs, small air sacs. And as you can see, those alveoli are surrounded by small blood vessels known as capillaries. And we've talked about capillaries previously when we looked at the cardiovascular system. So what happens in the alveoli? When we breathe in, oxygen travels into these alveoli and moves from inside of the alveoli, across the cells, and into the deoxygenated blood that's moving through the capillaries. And the deoxygenated blood then becomes oxygenated, ready to be transferred to the rest of the body. At the same time, carbon dioxide moves in the opposite direction. So carbon dioxide, which is being transported in the deoxygenated blood, goes into the alveoli, ready to be exhaled or breathed out. So it's the process of gases moving across cells in one way or another. This process is aided through diffusion. And the diffusion happens between alveoli and capillaries. And it's the process of molecules moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until it is more evenly balanced. If we use this diagram here, Diagram A is clearly unbalanced. On one side, we have a lot of molecules, and on the other, we have very few. Now, if diffusion was to happen over time, we would eventually reach diagram B, where you can see the molecules have traveled through the cells, or through the walls of cells, until we have a more balanced representation. If we look at that in relation to the lungs, so you get a better understanding, when we inhale air, there is a higher concentration of oxygen in the alveoli and there's a higher concentration of CO2, carbon dioxide, in the deoxygenated blood cells in the capillaries. So the orange circles represent the oxygen, the yellow circles represent carbon dioxide. As you can clearly see, we've got a high concentration of oxygen in the alveoli and we've got a higher concentration of CO2 in the capillaries. What therefore needs to happen is diffusion needs to take place to address this imbalance. So the oxygen travel through the walls of the alveoli and into the capillaries. And likewise, the carbon dioxide goes in the opposite direction. And this process happens, this process happens every time we breathe in and out. Every time we breathe in, oxygen is transferring through into the capillaries to oxygenize those blood cells. And then when we breathe out, the oxygen that's been, sorry, the carbon dioxide that's been transferred back into the alveoli is expelled because it's a waste product and we don't need it. It is quite a technical term and a technical process, gaseous exchange and diffusion. So make sure you go back through and you know this very well. So let's see if we know more and remember more. Do you know what the two primary functions of the respiratory system in sport are? Could you describe the process of inhalation through the nine different components of the respiratory system? Can you explain why inhaled air and exhaled air are so different and why those percentages are different? And lastly, in the most complex part, can you analyse the process of gaseous exchange and explain how diffusion occurs in the alveoli? If you can answer yes to all of those questions, that's brilliant, and you should find the challenges and the tasks that you're set, no problem. As always, any questions or concerns, then please email us directly. Thank you.